Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This video is for my brothers Specifically those who are being persecuted in places like India Who are being targeted and humiliated by Hindutva extremists Our complete deen teaches us when to engage and when to not engage into a fight And our religion tells us to fight when needed with everything that we've got But not every fight is okay. There are important rules that we should follow during the act of defending ourselves. And so in this video I will teach you what to do in a street fight according to Islam. Point number one, get in touch with Allah. People sometimes die in street fights for stupid reasons and the best way to make sure you're safe is to get in touch with Allah. That's because He is the Creator. He is the strongest and he owns everything and not asking for his help and guidance in a situation like this where your life is on the line is not a wise decision and in fact it's considered arrogant. Allah says in the Quran, your Lord has proclaimed, call upon me and I will respond to you. Surely those who are too proud to worship me will enter hell fully humbled. Allah literally promises us that if we ask him for something then he will give it to us. And I believe that the best thing to ask for in a situation like this is help getting out of that situation without problems. Point number two, do not throw yourself into destruction. There is an ayat from the Quran that says the exact same thing. And what it means when it comes to street fights is that you should avoid the fights, especially the ones that you know you would lose. And do you know why? It's because you might die or injure someone or maybe even get persecuted and end up in jail. You need to realize that street fighting has no rules. There are knives, sticks, metal bars, and sometimes even guns. And you shouldn't expect that your fight will be 1v1, as your opponent might have some friends to help him. There is no win. Point number three, analyze the situation. Before getting into fight mode, you need to analyze the situation and quantify the danger ahead. See if it deserves a fight or not. Is it one person or more? Is your opponent stronger or bigger than you? Is he fast? What weapons does he use? What options do you have? Violence is usually a surprise and the one who is prepared and certain is the one who will win. Maybe your opponent has a body like a fighter. Maybe they have hardened knuckles, hardened palms, calluses. Maybe they have scars or very thick hands and muscles. Maybe they have short hair and no earrings or piercings or even cauliflower ears like wrestlers. There are other signs as well. For example, the way that they move around, something like a shark or a wolf looking around at people as if they are prey. And you will get a feeling, an uncomfortable feeling. That's your survival instinct telling you that this person is dangerous and it's good to listen to it. However, it's impossible to make an individual strategy for someone before you meet them. You can make strategies for people once they are a known quantity and once you have a little bit of time to study them in your environment. And this is why your situational awareness is so important. You are able to assess if they are a threat and then take action and make plans based on that. Point number four, strike first. Preparing for a fight is not just physical, it can be mental as well. After analyzing the situation, the best case scenario is calming things down or even escaping the situation by running. But if you can't do that for whatever reason, then you will find that your body is pumped with adrenaline, your heart is racing and your legs are shaking. You are now entering fight mode. You should use this to your advantage to finish the fight as soon as possible. This can be done by striking first. Throwing a strong hit can unbalance your opponent and give you the opportunity to run away from the fight. If your enemy has a knife, then try not to engage. However, if you are forced to fight, then find a long weapon like a stick or a metal bar to keep some distance from that knife. You can also grab your jacket and wrap it around your arm. If it's a bare hand fight, then it can be way easier to escape. And if not, then you should find a way to win but without causing much damage. Point number five knowing the realities. You should always be aware of the two realities of a street fight, survival and getting away as quickly as you can. These are your two goals. And believe me, if you are really serious about getting away, then you will get through just about any opening. 
even if there is a crowd in front of you. Your goal is to survive, so just make space. Do enough damage to where you can just get a little bit hurt and hurt the other person enough that they're not going to want to chase you. Death and serious injury only occur when escape is not possible, when someone grabs you or when someone corners you with a weapon or you've been surprised and you're with your family. If you can't run away, then you need to do as much damage as possible and stop the threat before it stops you. Before you know how to cause harm and how to cause damage, you need to be acquainted with real violence. And the only way to do that for most people aside from real world experience, which is extremely dangerous and impractical, unless you're in the military or unless you're in law enforcement, then the only way is to look online. There are plenty of channels that are available for free, such as Active Self Protection or ASP. This is a channel and there are others like it that I recommend, where you can see actual real life violent engagements. Most of them are in Brazil or America and they involve firearms. However, you can learn a lot from watching knife encounters, fist fights online and things where real violence is occurring. A lot of them also occur in Mexico and in other places that are pretty much lawless in many places where cartels openly operate and where the police are openly fighting with criminal gangs and there's no real order or safety. Yes, it may be upsetting and yes, it may turn your stomach. But if it makes you feel this way just seeing it online, then how do you think you'd feel in person? Are you going to be ready? Make sure you understand the realities of what this means. This is going to mean sharpening your mind and hardening your mind. The realities of violence are extremely ugly, it's horrifying, it's fast and it's shocking, even traumatizing to witness. And it's something that you need to be prepared for. If you don't prepare yourself or learn situational awareness, then it means that it's very likely your opponent is going to win. You are at the disadvantage. It really is that simple. So prepare yourselves. Point number six, you need to train. In the last point, I recommended that you watch a channel called ASP, which will get you acquainted with real life violence online. However, you should know Watching a ton of videos online, including self-defense videos, will not be as valuable as you actually training yourself or with a friend. Real fights do not happen one move at a time. Street fights are not rehearsed. There are no pauses. There's always something happening and there's always more than one person involved, even if it's just observers. So if you are not training, then you are not really learning anything. You need to learn how to train and what real defense is. If you made it to the end, then comment we are brave and don't forget to like and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.